Hi folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Pulsar Thermion 60 series of LRF scopes that have came out recently. Uh, effectively what you're going to find out is there is a new XP60, a new XG60, and a new XL60. Uh, basically by moving to the 60 millimeter lens up here on the front, they have been able to increase magnification in the units. And so if you want to take a look over here at the board, I kind of illustrate, illustrated here what they've got going on. You know, like in the case of the previous XP50, they had been running a 2X at 50 millimeter focal length. So when we add more curve to the front of a lens, it decreases the exit pupil or the angle coming out the back. So you can see if we stayed at 50 millimeters here and we wanted to go to 3x at the same 50 millimeters and add that 3x lens, it decreases our exit pupil and now we wouldn't be hitting the entire sensor here back here in the back. And so by pushing it forward to the 60 millimeter, it gives us a little, a little bit more distance to let that cone get bigger and hit the entire sensor. And the, the back end result is we can now get higher magnification off the lens, but we'll get a small decrease in field of view. Which brings me to the other major change that they've made in the display up here. So on the back end, you'll see over here, where the display ocular has gotten much larger than the previous display ocular, this lens back here in the back, which is allowing them to see this new larger display. So effectively, we've got a 2560 by 2560 display in there, which, you know, if you do the math on that, it's gonna be a little, it's about six and a half million pixels, where previously we were running 1024, 768 on those displays, which is, I believe 786, 432. So we've got a dramatic increase in the amount of pixels available inside the display, which is gonna give us much better resolutional clarity inside the device. And effectively, what they're doing in the display is they're now representing the display with rounded corners inside of that 2560 and they're fitting that ocular much, much better where previously it had been a much smaller rectangle in there. And I kind of represented that by this little dashed line inside of the new one to give you an idea. And I'll show you some pictures that I'll take with my cell phone at the back to give you a better representation of how much difference there actually is there. But, but just take my word on it, this, it's, a, it's a pretty tremendous size difference. It's, it's a very tremendous difference in the way that it gives you eye box behind it by going to this larger circular, you know, like rounding them corners out and making this much larger back here. So, you know, now when we're pulling up on it, I can be anywhere from about two and a half inches off of it to right up on the lens, you know, in the back of here and still get the full edge view of that display where previously, you know, I would find myself hugging right up on it. And then we get into the six to one, I, I would argue they're running about six to one pixel factoring. So in other words, if we jump over here and we look at it, you know, obviously there's a big 2560 by 2560 square display inside of there but the way they're presenting it is a little bit more rectangular with rounded corners. So there is some loss, you know, there's some portion of the display that they're not lighting at all. And I think it's about six to one pixel factoring, but that still means we're six times denser. So, you know, previously, if you got on the edge of something out here and you were trying to represent this as being rounded, because the display was smaller, you might have to zoom into it a little bit farther. And because you had less pixel density, you know, you start getting these little stair steps between your edges, you know, if you were looking at something round like that. And now not only are these a lot smoother because there's less voids because the pixel density is higher, we're starting out with the background image is just because, you know, like think of if you were sitting there looking at 10 foot away, looking at a 50 inch uh, television display screen, and now you're looking at a 70 inch display screen. If we're watching a baseball game on there, much easier to see the baseball and details in it uh, 70 inches at that same distance without having to act like in the case of this, stretch that image up, you know. So it's not that they're really 
other than on the front end where they in, did truly increase magnification narrow field of view and that gives you a better PPI at distance, on the display they're not really giving you a better resolutional clarity but they're making it much easier to look at and therefore cutting the necessity to stretch that and get pixelization. So, you know, when you add it all up together, if you wanted my opinion, it's about a 30 to 35% improvement in the overall ID capability of each unit independently. And, you know, we'll get into the difference between XP, XG, and XL, you know, or you can call me, but effectively, you know, the XP is going to give you the most economical uh, wide field of view and a pretty good versatility, you know, in terms of your top end ID range, but you're going to suffer a little bit in terms of the top end, uh, end ID range versus, say, the XG unit, which is going to narrow that field of view which is going to pack those pixels a little more densely over a smaller area so you're going to get a slower pixelization rate and still be the same price point as the XP you know or you can jump up to the XL unit which is going to give you the 1024 768 high definition sensor and kind of let you have your cake and eat it too um, in terms of the device so additionally you will see that in the kit I don't have one here with me right now to show you, but they are now including the remote control with all units, and they are actually including this really nice American Defense uh, Ad Recon STD uh, double lever throw QD mount is coming free of charge in the kit package. They have also started including two APS-3 batteries in all kit packages, but I'll go into a little bit more detail as, as time progresses and I'm showing these devices off individually about the differences there and things like that. This video is mainly just to let you know it's out there and I'm getting a lot of guys that want to see the difference between them so I'm going to try to put some footage together uh, that shows you, you know, some footage side by side on this rack so you can get an idea what to expect between the two units. Let's jump over to some footage and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I got the three units side by side here on my tripod and basically what I'm going to show you here, you know, like initially here I'm just kind of trying to give you a feel for the field of view difference. I've got them lined up on that fence and I've got them short focused at 24 yards, um, kind of showing you the separation at 24 yards for the given profile that I had also, but mainly this is about field of view. Uh, we've got the XL60 up in the top right, XG60 in the lower left, and XP60 in the bottom right. Obviously, you can see that. But, you know, at the very short range, you're going to get kind of an idea, depth of field, differences between the different units. That's going to be front to back, how in focus the image stays, you know, how blurry it is. Now, obviously, I'm pulling way up here, but if you kind of look at the building in the foreground, you can get an idea of the difference between them. I'm going to start focusing the units here. So now I'm focusing the XP60 um, and then the XL60 and then the XG60. And then essentially I'm going to take a rangefinder reading here in a minute and, and show you how well the rangefinder is able to accurately read that placard back there on that bin. The, the radius on that bin, that bin's galvanized and it's very hard to hit the bin itself because the radius wants to scatter, you know, the radius and the fact that it's silver wants to scatter the LRF off or the laser off. And so you really have to hit that placard in order to be able to get it to read that kind of flat spot I'm aiming at there if you see it in the brackets. Um, but you can see where I'm going to kind of prove that all three units read basically the same reading, um, and I'll go through that. Also, you can be paying attention to the detail on the bin. You'll see where effectively the L and the G are, I would argue, in the, in the display and in the video is both pretty much identical. The P doesn't have quite the resolution because... You know, it's a it's a 64480 sensor with a wider field of view than the G, and then, of course the L's got the 1024 sensor that's going to let it do both. So you know, basically the L's going to give you your cake and eat it too in terms of giving you the widest field of view in its class, along with the highest ID range, which certainly beneficial in a night vision device when we realize that you know we can't see anything that's outside of the display. Um, but in terms of the 640, 480 devices coming in a little lower, GMP, you're going to want to pick and choose those based on, you know, do I, is it more important to me to get more field of view 
or is it more important to me to get identification range at the cost of field of view? And, you know, if I had to quantify it, it's not a gigantic difference in the ID distances between P and G, but I would say, you know, it's in the neighborhood of, of 30% when it comes to those small features on something the size of a coyote way out there at distance. And you have the ability to zoom a little farther into the G, which I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Um, right now I've got, I've got the L and the P still at 8X, but I'm going to take that G up to where they're all the same here in a minute. Um, and I'll have them all at the same, and then I'm going to take them all all the way to the top so that you can get a really good idea of, of what they look like side by side. So there you can see, you know, obviously to me the G and the L look pretty much identical at that distance, focused correctly. The P, there's a little bit of resolutional loss. You know, you're not getting quite as good a sharpness in the ribs and things on that bend. It would certainly be a little bit, uh, you know, tougher to place good accurate shots at that distance using that one, but it's not really meant to be shooting at, at really long distances. You know, in the case of this, it's a large object way, way out there, but, you know, primarily we would be talking about a smaller object at a shorter distance and the advantage that you would gain there. So, again, you can see here where effectively I'm putting them all at the same magnification level to give you an idea of what things are going to look like in in that setup. Now I'm going to take them all to their maximum magnifications so that you get a pretty fair comparison on, you know, how how accurate you you could aim and the relevance of aim small hit small I mean you can clearly see there where the G while it does get more pixelated all the way up at that 32x it's giving you a better background image to reticle relationship to aim into potentially than a couple of the other units and they're able to take it up higher than that because they're starting it with a narrower field of view um, here again, I'm going to come down on these uh, buildings. This is more in a realistic range. I mean, you'll see I'll range it here in a minute, but we're more in the 200 yardish range on those buildings. And that's going to give you an idea in a more realistic hunting condition, you know, what kind of resolution you could expect and what the field of views in kind of a, a useful scenario are going to look like. So, you know, the, the main takeaway I want you to get here is that field of view um I'm, I'm setting all the pips current right now i'm setting all the pips at 8x so they're you know just so that the little pips are matching at 8x you know in case you guys are paying attention to what's in the pip as i'm moving them around here um, be mindful of the things moving in and out of the image like those cars in the background and things as i'm moving them because they're all moving together, and so it's a pretty good representation of the difference in field of view. So you're going to see in some instances, like here in a minute, I'm going to take and I'm going to line all the units up on the left side of that larger building back there so that you can get an idea of how much you can see to the right in each one of the units. And if you pay attention kind of individually, it'll give you a pretty good representation of the difference in field of views between the units. So... You know, you can see I'll move them around here a bit and kind of get get you an idea of what you're going to see through them uh, right, left, and, and come back and line up on that. But all in all, you know, if you wanted my opinion, the L and the G have about identical PPI, so their downrange performance is going to be very, very similar. The big detraction from G is going to be to get that higher end PPI out there at distance. And by PPI, I'm talking pixel per inch, you know. So if we calculated the area we're looking at and divide it by the amount of available pixels, they're almost identical. The P is going to be lower because it's a 64480 sensor, same as the G series, but with a starting, a wider starting field of view. The L obviously has a much wider field of view than all of them but it also has a lot more thermistors on its on its 1024 768 sensor you know effectively a 64480 is 307 307200 versus a 1024 768 being 786432 so you know, it's when you start adding curve to that lens, you start decreasing exit pupil and you've got to accommodate the sensor relationship. And so, 
you know when you're when you're trying to do that in a 640 480 in the png you kind of got to pick and choose how you want that to work out and in the case of the l you kind of get to have your cake and eat it too it just costs you more but i just wanted you to see this i'll be right back with you with some more footage Okay, here I've got some footage out in my backyard. I had some deer back there, and effectively here at first, I'm going to show you all three units at their native field of views. Um, I'm going to turn around now, and I'm going to zoom them up to where they're all at 4x, so you can get a, you know, what I'm trying to show you here is the pixelization effect that you get, like in the XP, starting at that lower uh 3x 640 480 configuration versus the xg with the 4x configuration you're definitely going to notice a little bit less uh, clarity in the p potentially at this distance than you're going to notice in the g because again the g is starting with a much narrower field of view at that 4x and it's able you know because they both have 307,200 receptors essentially it's dyson the image up into smaller chunks so you know as i go up magnification which is what i'm doing here you know i'm now i'm working up to 8x in all the units eventually i'm going to get all the way up to 20x and you're going to see that um you know you're going to see that pixelization effect so again you know you say well why would i pick p or g obviously the l is going to do it all the l is going to give you a, the best field of view coupled up with the best identifiable clarity uh, it's going to have the highest pixel density along with the best field of view. If you go to the PNG models, the P is going to give you a, a much wider field of view than the G, but it's going to come at the cost of a lower PPI. So out there at longer distances, you, you're going to start to lose a little bit of your of your image resolution. Although, you know, I'm not making the case that it's still not easy to tell that that's a deer and there isn't plenty of details in it. It's just unquestionably you can look at the two of them side by side and see that you can see finer features better in the G because you are starting with less field of view. Plus the G is going to give you the benefit of zooming all the way up to 32x, which I will show here at the, at the bottom end of the video. I'll show it zoomed all the way up at that 32x. And so in the grand scheme of giving you a really high reticle to object placement alignment, you know, and the relevance of aim small, hit small, that's going to be a primary advantage to the G is that ability to very finitely position that reticle into the background subject. Again, I would argue you do it just as well in the L, but the obvious, you know, downside to the L is going to be it's the highest cost of them all. So, you know, there you can see at 32x that that G is giving you the ability to really finitely place the reticle. You know, again, P is going to be great for field of view. If you pay attention here in a minute when I zoom back out, kind of notice, you know, like some of them deer that are up sitting on that hill where you can just see their head up in the grass, you start losing some of those in the G that you can still see in the P and the L because effectively you can't see nothing that's going on outside of that display in a night vision device i mean we don't have the use of our eyes so you know if it's off the display if your field of view gets too narrow you'll just miss some stuff you know and the, the pro and the con is you if you don't ever know it there you really won't miss it i guess but but it definitely might have been there so you know that's the advantage in terms of what that l really brings to the party in terms of the versatility well i hope you found that informative uh, they truly did make some noticeable improvements in this device. If I can answer any questions for you or help you out in any way, feel free to give me a call, toll-free 877-806-2977. Uh, we'll have these for sale on our website as we get them in, www.foxoptic.com. We'd love to have your business. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.